Cyclone Ellie weakening inland over Australia on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 6th. Around the world right now, we still have uh, a lack of tropical cyclones, really. It's just Ellie that's moving inland again and is now weaker down to a tropical depression as it continues over Australia. It hasn't surfaced out to sea for many, many days now since before the new year. In the Atlantic, it's 146 days until hurricane season, still a mighty long way away, we're happy to say. Mainly in the Atlantic right now, not much going on, just that big front moving off the US East Coast, uh, which was proving, uh, providing a lot of severe weather in the last few days, now completely clear pretty much. Well, here's the action in the Australian region. There's Ellie and two other areas of interest from a big moisture soup, really, in the uh, South Pacific, in the Coral Sea, a 30% chance and a 10% chance near Vanuatu. And we're still watching the South China Sea with one eye, an area of interest there which has a 10% chance of development of a broad system with competing centers, uh, and it's going to struggle and has very little time on its hands to develop into anything. Personally, I wouldn't have marked it at all at this point, uh, but our analyst team still have it up there. Down in the Indian Ocean itself, the proper open waters, it's still quite quiet. Although off the coast of Mozambique, there's quite a lot of heavy weather that's materialising there with some convective thunderstorms blowing up, particularly in the south. Let's check the worldwide satellite imagery for the last 24 hours showing you where most of that rainfall occurred and you'll note that it's mainly the Western Pacific and the Australian systems that are causing those red colours to start to appear but quite a few different areas worldwide uh, that are of interest on that loop. Well here is the latest satellite imagery of Ellie and if you missed it in the last couple of days it was looking decent but now you can see that pretty much all of the convection is tailing off completely now and that will drastically reduce the rain rate from this storm as well. Of course it's lashed this whole area for over a week in some places with extraordinary amounts of rainfall and heavy flooding. Thankfully uh, we're expecting only maximums of 150 millimeters now in some areas and places underneath the storm might only get quite a bit less actually. It's the tail end to the south side of it that will be producing most of that rainfall. Here is a wide shot of Australia. Ellie on the left hand side, that other area of interest further towards the right there, um, blowing up a lot of convection, just a very disorganized uh, area um, around this uh, part of the world right now with just systems blowing up everywhere and really nothing properly developing, although the models have been quick to forecast all kinds of different scenarios coming out of these uh, systems all along a big trothing line from Ellie basically all the way around to Fiji and towards Samoa so a lot of moisture in that area and a lot of rainfall expected in the next few days across the South Pacific whether it's over land or at sea that get very high accumulations that could be dangerous uh, that is still up in the air somewhat You'll, you can see that other system further east as well near Vanuatu there and this is the Western Pacific and I got a few, couple of images of this one uh, but you, can, you get the general idea of what's going on with that system uh, a fair amount of convection blowing up not huge amounts and a little bit more trailing to the south of it as well you can see down there uh, just off the coast of southern Vietnam um, potentially another area that's trying to get a center so there's two competing centers there that are probably a couple of hundred miles apart um, and it's really going to struggle to get anything going in terms of tropical cyclone status but it certainly will be a rainmaker as we've been saying for the last few days as well Let's check sea surface temperatures around the world on our whistle stop tour. Quick conversion, 80 degrees Fahrenheit is just less than 27 Celsius and pretty much the threshold for tropical cyclone development. This uh, graphic also has a slight cool bias and you'll see there across the Caribbean still got decent temperatures pushing 27 degrees Celsius and further east across the rest of the Atlantic those temperatures are quite a bit cooler there as well not really up to scratch for tropical cyclones as you'd expect 
Indian Ocean can sometimes throw up a surprise on the northern side in January. Temperatures are just about favourable there. The southwest Indian Ocean, that's really boiling quite a bit in the Mozambique Channel particularly. Uh, it's been quiet in that zone so far and if any systems do form they might get a good chance. Towards the Australian region those temperatures are a little bit lower but still decent in the tropics. But to the west of Western Australia uh, temperatures go down quite a bit there. But north, around the north side of Australia boiling hot water. Uh, 29 pushing 30 degrees Celsius, Coral Sea pushing 28, 29 maybe there as well and around Fiji 28 or 29 degrees as well so the South Pacific looking in very good stead. The tropical zone of the Western Pacific still warm all the way up to Guam at least getting 28 degrees Celsius more than enough for tropical cyclone development so always be on your guard. It is above average in the Western Pacific right now, as you can see on this graphic. In the Australian region, it is also above average in the South Pacific side, but actually a little bit below where Ellie has been tracking recently and off towards Indonesia, so that's quite interesting. La Nina is still quite visible there on that imagery, but it is starting to break down. The Atlantic is above average, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico, and that might enhance precipitation across the eastern United States. Oceanic heat content is quite high all the way down to Fiji and Vanuatu, uh, the highest amounts of course near the equator. In the Western Pacific same too, uh, but the tropical zone still not too bad when you look at that area there. Anything uh, more than 75 to 100 there uh, is decent for a substantial tropical cyclone development potentially. See what the GFS model has to say about this then. Uh, taking a look at the Philippine area first of all, uh, that system in the South China Sea getting stretched and swallowed up very quickly. A little rogue system possibly near the Mariana Islands there towards the day 3 to 4 period. So that's something to watch out for to see if we get any run consistency on that. Just watch that again over there on the right hand side. That is potentially a tropical cyclone moving through the Mariana Islands, a very small one. Uh, that would be a turn up for the books. The Australian region, there's Ellie uh, moving off towards the southeast and then eventually completely unraveling and down in the South Pacific moving through New Caledonia whatever happens out of that invest whether it becomes a cyclone or not it certainly will cause a wind event there uh, it looks like it's going to be a trough though it's going to be very broad and probably elongated as it continues southeastwards there and then potentially that next system that forms in behind it there in the south um, in the Coral Sea there it is just uh, towards the northeast there and here's precipitation expectations over the next seven days for the entire region. Any of those orange to red zones, that's uh, getting up over around two to 300 millimeters of rainfall in that seven day period. Some parts of the Cape York Peninsula, although mostly it's out to sea towards uh, Vanuatu and New Caledonia, getting some decent rainfall amounts. And also we wanted to try and just uh, pan in to the Philippines up there as well, right near the top, extremely high rainfall amounts possible from all this monsoonal activity and little tropical systems that are continuing to move through. Potentially 24 inches of rain near Palawan, that would be 600 millimeters in seven days if that verifies. In the longer range, part of that, you can see what's happening here, um, looking towards the Philippine Islands once again, a very broad, um, complex system that tries to get itself together and it looks like it does just wrap up a little bit and potentially a brief spin-up tropical cyclone. Either way, an extremely broad and uh, difficult to predict uh, area here, bands of moisture moving all around there. This is the wind profile of course, but the moisture is definitely contained in that as well and that's really the source for all of that rainfall. Southwest Indian Ocean also looking out for that day 5 to 10 period for that potential tropical cyclone that we saw on last night's update so there is some consistency on that one now around about the 14th of January forming and intensifying and becoming a rather substantial cyclone there towards the end of that 10 day period. Still quite far out so we really can't put any uh, kind of certainty on that but you would expect something like this to happen at this time of year in this basin so decent uh, chance that that might happen <clears throat> what's to become of that other system in the south pacific well it actually just uh, fades away really 
uh, really doesn't do very much looks like turns around there north of New Caledonia and then a second system forming right at the end there just about to move through Fiji or it does uh, brush past the main islands of Fiji to the western side uh, so right near the end of that 10-day period uh, potentially a system for Fiji keep watching that one again for run consistency in the next few days that's all the serious stuff done with. Take a look at the Force 13 merch store and scan the barcode, which will take you straight there. And you'll see all of the usual items, including our products and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt. You can also request full season and individual animations right there as well. In the silly range then, day 10 to 16, that is a potentially major cyclone landfall for Madagascar there, looks like a borderline category 3 that was, its remnants pull out towards Mozambique, not much left of it though by the time it gets there, and some of it may still be felt uh, towards South Africa as well, uh, but mainly it's an impact for Madagascar as you can clearly see there, uh, doesn't even survive as a TS on the other side I don't think, maybe just briefly, or as a weak one for a little while. So that could be the next one to watch and in the South Pacific another one there that forms that's the one that moves through Fiji and then it gets much stronger as it dives southwards looks like it avoids Tonga and its next stop really is New Zealand uh, as a remnant or extra tropical cyclone that could deliver tropical storm force winds but when I say it could deliver it it is right at the end of that 16 day period so once again <coughs> a huge amount of caution on that extremely unlikely at this stage but look out for model consistency and maybe then we can start talking a little bit more in detail. Well, what happened on this day? It was January the 6th, 1998, when an extraordinary scenario was playing out. I don't think we've seen anything like it before or since in this basin. Cyclones Ron and Susan, both Category 5s on this day, as well as Katrina, which was to the west, and that name bears resemblance, of course, to its 2005 counterpart these days but back in 1998 it was just little tropical storm Katrina and it would eventually become a triple barreled name Katrina Victor Cindy but of course in more contemporary uh, reports it's actually just Katrina Victor and Cindy yeah quite boring in the end really uh, the pictured storm by the way was Ron the next name in the Atlantic naming list, the first one of this year, will be Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian, and in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. We've had one storm so far, if you count the second coming of Ellie. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mocha. We are still code blue for the effects of Ellie, rainfall predominantly inducing uh, that status. That is the second lowest alert status on Force 13's cyclone operation status. The next name on the Australian naming list is Freddy, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chiniso, and the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.